Hi friends, hello, hi, how are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Hello, hi. So, candle of the day. My friend Nisa got me this candle. She was my secret Santa this year. I have no idea where she got it, but it smells like chai and it's amazing. Um, hi, so, sorry if I look a little rough. Um, I've been, <laughs> I've been running around all day, but I wanted to get this video filmed. I saw this video idea from Kelly Gooch here on YouTube, who I have been following Kelly forever. Um, literally since, I think even before I started my YouTube channel, I have been watching Kelly. She's, I, just watching her growth has been amazing. She's a great channel. She's super makeup focused and has just like the best takes and opinions and I overall adore her. So I will link Kelly in the description of this video. You should absolutely go check her out. And she is a person who I feel like her and like Lauren May Beauty and like they, there's just this group of people who come up with these super creative, amazing ideas. And I saw this one one, and I was like, that is hysterical, number one. And number two, such a good idea. And number three, she put in the title that she was going to be like a little sassy. And it made me laugh so hard because Kelly just seems like a, such a nice person that to hear her be sassy, it's just like, she's great. I'll link her down below. Go check her out. But the idea for this video was makeup that I'm pretty sure I will be seeing in TJ Maxx soon. And I thought this was so funny. Like, I just feel like I feel like we talk a lot about like makeup that might be on sale with the close of Becca. It was like, what brands do we think might be closing? But I think there's a very specific type of makeup that you see and you are like, I'm not even gonna buy that at full price. <laughs> I'm gonna wait until it's 50% off at TJ Maxx or Marshalls and I'm gonna buy it then. And here's the thing, I love TJ Maxx or Marshall, especially when I was first getting into makeup. This is like my biggest hack to you guys if you're first starting out in makeup, if you don't know about this. TJ Maxx and Marshalls has a ridiculous amount of makeup that they sell that is all like super discounted. It's how I got the Anastasia blush quad when I was first starting out. It's how I got all these lipsticks. I remember they had the ABH lipsticks for like $8 they have really, really good deals on high-end makeup. And one thing I will say is I would just check everything. <laughs> if you know, you know. I would just personally, like, open the makeup. Don't touch it, but, like, make sure other people haven't touched it before you buy it because I have been burned a few times on that. However, I wanted to talk about makeup that has come out in the last six months or so that I think, well, not that I think will be at TJ Maxx. I wouldn't be surprised. If I saw this makeup here, I wouldn't be like, oh my god, I thought that was gonna do so well. Because that's the thing about TJ Maxx makeup. TJ Maxx makeup is basically just stock that a brand needs to get rid of. And while sometimes I do genuinely think it's just to like clear out product, a lot of time it's kind of where the failed launches go. Like the Too Faced Unicorn collection, a lot of stuff ended up there. A lot of Kat Von D, when they were still Kat Von D, ended up there. It's really for makeup that just didn't sell well. They sell it to TJ Maxx for wholesale price just to get some of the costs back and then we get it for a lot cheaper. Today's video is sponsored by Audible. Those of you that have been watching for a while know how much I love Audible and their services. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. The thing I love about Audible is that they have some of the largest selection of audiobooks. So you can find things from bestsellers to lesser known titles to celebrity memoirs to motivational books. And on top of that, you can get original entertainment from a bunch of top celebrity creators. One of my favorite features about my Audible account is their Audible Plus catalog. So here you can find tons of free books to listen to, free podcasts. My current favorite podcast to listen to on here is the Your wrong about podcast by Michael Hobbs and Sarah Marshall. Their podcast about Princess Diana, their like whole series, phenomenal. Also in the plus catalog, they have tons of guided fitness, guided meditation, sleep tracks to help you sleep better, and ad-free versions of your favorite TV shows. Now I'm always listening to new things on Audible, but this past month I've been weirdly re-listening to one of my favorite like childhood book series, which is The Hunger Games. I kind of love that about Audible. Once you buy an audiobook on 
here, you pretty much always have it. So if you kind of have those favorite books that you always go back and re-listen to, for me it's The Hunger Games, it's basically always there for you. If you're interested in trying Audible, you can visit audible.com slash smokyglow or text smokyglow to 500-500. And new members to Audible can always try it for 30 days for free. Thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring this video and for providing me with endless entertainment. And let's jump into the video. So the very first thing that popped into my mind was something that I very recently talked about in Yasser Paz, and that was the MAC Cruella de Vil collection. I've seen a ton of MAC products at TJ Maxx, so just right off the bat, but I just want to say, when I talked about this collection, in particular the palette, I basically was like, guys, I don't care what the context is, this is a bad palette. Like, I don't care what the thought was behind it, what the theme was behind it. I don't really care about any of that. I don't like the palette. Like, it's not cohesive, doesn't make sense, it's stupid placement, like I'm just not a fan of this. And then I found out the context. Okay. <laughs> It is rare that I find out context of makeup. I'm sorry, I'm filming this so late at night and I'm like low-key exhausted, um, but I'm like laughing thinking about it because I'll never forget when I realized that this is supposed to be the Cruella de Vil collection. I'm assuming because Disney has a new like origin film coming out about Cruella de Vil, so they partnered with Mac. It is rare that I hear context and that makes something worse to me. Like normally with added context, I'm like, okay, like at least that makes a little, that knowing that this is supposed to be inspired by the Cruella de Vil, who is like arguably the scariest Disney villain ever. Anyway, knowing that this was inspired by the Cruella de Vil and knowing that they based it off of the movie, it made me laugh so hard. What the f***? There's such a wealth that you could pull from from the 101 Dalmatians movie, but not even that. Like, the new Emma Stone movie, I've seen the previews, it looks awesome. There's so much inspiration, and it's all about fashion design, and, like, it's so much more that... It, 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 there's so much you could pull from from that. Even, like, a quad of, like, black, red, white, and gray. Some, that would have been better than this. Like, even something that was so painfully basic, at least it would have been on trend and on theme for somebody like Cruella DeVille. I just cannot see this performing well. Even for people, low-key, I feel like a lot of times the Disney collabs, they kind of have that built-in audience, so people are just gonna buy it no matter what. I can't even see, like, hardcore Disney stands buying into this and, like, wanting to buy this product. Like, I fully think this is not going to do well, and this was first on my list for a product I would see at TJ Maxx, absolutely. The next thing I wanna talk about, and this is honestly no shade to the brand. Uh, I actually really like Kiko. I think they're a really fun brand. I've gotten some PR from them and a lot of their stuff is great. I think they're kind of underrated, honestly. But I saw this and it's not even that this is like, no, this is pretty bad. It's a Kiwi palette that has no green in it. <laughs> not a Kiwi color in sight. It's like a pink, a gold, a brown, and a beige, and then the same in shimmers. And I'm just so befuddled about why you would make a kiwi palette. I just feel like nobody's gonna buy this. This is really, I guess, what this video should be called, shit that nobody's gonna buy. I, I can't imagine, be, okay, the, the whole, <sighs> Sorry. The whole premise of cute food themed stuff is that it's like a little experience. Like I feel like people have forgotten this in the makeup making people. I feel like they have brands as they are otherwise known. I feel like they have like forgotten that the reason the appeal of cutesy packaging works is because the entire thing is an experience. Like the whole thing is an ex from start to finish, from packaging to inside, it's the experience. But they stop at the packaging and they don't move forward to make the inside interesting at all. And it blows my mind. Like it genuinely boggles my brain why you would make a kiwi palette and not just make it 
any neutrals, honestly. Like the seeds inside of a kiwi are all neutral. I don't get it. And I feel like nobody is going to buy this because what's the point? If, if it were at least neutrals and it all matched the theme of kiwi, I would be like, okay, like that's cute. That makes sense. People, but it doesn't even have anything past just a kiwi it's so confusing to me like genuinely the fact that they put even like had it in this circular design and they had the big circle in the middle could have set it up perfectly to be you know how kiwis are like more dense in the middle like with seeds they could have had a deeper color and then almost have this sort of gradient of neutrals like spanning out to mimic those seeds but no we have bright pink and purple and this is what my kiwis look like when i open them i don't know about you guys yeah this i can totally imagine seeing this whole collection honestly their summer collection i can definitely imagine this being on the shelves at tj maxx and just like people buying it for very discounted pricing for sure okay next this is honestly a little shady it's only be i bought this product i would like to say so if it goes on sale at tj maxx i would actually recommend buying it if you see it there i just feel 90 percent of what urban decay puts out ends up at tj maxx and so when i saw that they came out with a new setting powder and i saw that it really was not getting too too much hype from the overall makeup community um and when I tried it myself and found it to be subpar it wasn't horrible like it's a good it's a decent powder but it's just like meh. I haven't tried something from Urban Decay in so long and that's why when I saw this I was like oh I'll give this a try like this actually looks like an interesting product like I'm down to try I'm always down to try setting powders like I'll give it a go and it it just, I wish Urban Decay, because I had high hopes, because it's part of their, like, all-nighter line, so I had high hopes that it would be, like, incredibly long-lasting or, like, super great, and it just isn't. It's just meh. And with the kind of hype for Urban Decay be just dwindling down and down and down and down, I feel like they need that, like, rock star hit it out of the park thing that's not going to end up in TJ Maxx, because a lot of their stuff does, with the exception of probably the Naked palettes. I see Urban Decay in TJ Maxx all of the time. And I believe, I'm not 100%, but I believe I already saw this on sale at Sephora, like shortly after it's launched. Don't quote me on that because I might be wrong, but I feel like I remember scrolling Sephora and seeing that this was already on sale and being like, it just dropped. But Urban Decay does that a lot too. They'll drop something and then like immediately put it on sale. Like they did that with the Disco Queen collection. So that's the other reason I low key was like, if we're talking TJ Maxx makeup, Decay new releases, it's a solid bet that if you wait like six months, you're gonna be able to buy it at a discount. And honestly, if you see this, again it's not horrible like it's not bad I just feel like it's not good enough that it's going to be that like knock it out of the park hit product that they need okay Kelly talked about this in her video and I fully agreed and that is the Anastasia Beverly Hills makeup wipes I know that I pretty recently talked about these in Yasser Pass like a while back when they came out I discussed these and I discussed how it's like a very telling sign for Anastasia just with how sort of out of touch it feels they have become with the makeup industry like it feels like at one point in time Anastasia really had their foot on the neck of the consumer and they were just like buy our stuff and we were like okay and we did and then to see things in 2021 and see like makeup wipes as their big launch I think there's I don't even think this is like a, oh I think maybe it'll end up those makeup wipes are at a TJ Maxx near you soon like there's not a chance in hell that they don't sell those makeup wipes Anastasia in general sells a lot of stuff to TJ Maxx but typically it's because they're like changing up packaging or or they're rebranding, or they're discontinuing something, so they just got rid of the stock to make room. Uh, these, however, I feel are going to end up there because I don't think they're going to perform well at all for Anastasia. I cannot imagine these doing super well for them on like a large scale. I know a lot of makeup artists were like defending the decision because like they use them, but like, Anastasia doesn't just service makeup artists. They're supposed to service like the large scale consumers, you know? So yeah, I definitely don't even think that's like a, oh, maybe <laughs> that's a like, you're going to see that soon. Next, we have the Fenty gloss clip. I had, don't know if I have ever seen something from Fenty at TJ Maxx, but I feel like maybe I have. Have I ever seen anything from Fenty? I'm so curious. Have you guys ever seen anything from Fenty at TJ Maxx? Because this one I almost didn't put on because I was like, I don't know if they sell to TJ Maxx like regularly. However, if they don't, they're going to start with this gloss. The gloss clip, I don't think we talked about enough how bad that was. 
I think Fenty a lot of times gets a pass, even from me, because like I love the brand. Their shade ranges, I love the products they put out, I feel like they're always very on trend, I feel like they rarely miss the mark. Then you have this, and I'm like, what the f***? <laughs> what the f*** is this? In the midst of a pandemic, Fenty Beauty said let's give them something that not only is a lip product, which, I, whatever, and not only is a lip product, it's a lip product that you literally have to shove your fingers into and is meant to be used in public. So in order to utilize this product the way it was intended, I would have to clip it onto my germy bag that is being exposed to the air, go in public, rip off my mask, stick my fingers in it, which I've either sanitized my hands with hand sanitizer, so they have chemicals on them, or I haven't, and they have germs on them. So either way, lose-lose. Like, you're either putting germs all in your lip gloss or you're putting sanitizer. There's no in-between. And then rubbing it on your lips in public. Like, that was just such poor decision-making. And when this particular product came out, like, we were over a year into the pandemic at this point, to the point where brands put putting out stuff like this a year later, you're like, it's like, come on. Like, I just feel like this is a product that, it, not even because it's like a horrible idea, like putting the gloss into a balm formula, I don't think is a bad idea. I wish it had just been in like a normal chapstick tube or like lipstick tube or something instead of this weird clip idea. And I also just think because of like what I just said, like practicality wise, I don't think a lot of people are going to want a product like this. I think for that reason, I could see them having a lot of excess stock of this product that they can't get rid of. So they need to resort to selling to TJ Maxx. I'd be very, very interested to know how this product actually sold. You and I know <laughs> a launch is bad when it comes out and people think that it's an April Fool's Day joke. Like, when your launch is being perceived as a joke, an April Fool's Day joke, you know that it's a really, really, really bad launch. Um, I'd be so curious to see the sales on that. Oh my god. I wish I worked for all these brands. I would love to know the numbers. I know that, like, I, 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 I maybe I'm just nosy. I would just love to know like what what did uh, did they make money back like how did how well did this do i'm so curious to know the behind the scenes numbers of everything like uh, next i fully believe that you're going to see some nyx tetris palettes lining the shelves um like it's not even a question to me i think those nyx tetris palettes although uh, you know what i will say i think they're going to do very well at tj maxx because a lot of people go to tj maxx to find that discounted makeup but they also go because they're trying to like build up some sort of makeup collection or at least have options. And honestly, the Tetris palette, the price that they had it at NYX did was kind of ridiculous. But I think that's dope that you could buy something that, while it's somewhat gargantuan of a palette, at least it's a ton of colors that you could pick from. If it was at a discounted price, you could get it for a really good deal. The shadows, I'm sure, are going to perform subpar, but it's like color you get to play with and you get to mess around with it. That's what I used TJ Maxx for when I was first starting out. I would just go and like buy stuff that I wanted to learn to like do makeup with and that's how I learned to do makeup. So I actually think maybe bad for NYX but I actually think the NYX Tetris palette would be like made for TJ Maxx. That's like the target demographic for a palette like that is people who are just starting out and want to have a ton of colors to play with. But yeah I fully believe that that is going to be a TJ Maxx. It's just too big I think. It was just one of those palettes that like wasn't well done enough in theme that you had collectors or people who are like super into dope makeup wanting it. It's also just not super on trend for what we see bigger, very successful brands doing, which is like smaller, more concise palettes, you know? Too Faced as a brand sort of a frequenter of TJ Maxx. And I tried to think about their new releases, and I actually think they've had some very good new releases, but I will say I am fairly confident that the Too Faced teddy bear palette. While I didn't hate the teddy bear collection, I again just think it's one of those palettes and collections that's going to end up in a store like TJ Maxx. Similarly to a lot of Too Faced sort of limited edition collections, I think that they're just going to end up there because I think the demand for Too Faced has lessened. I will say unless they maybe adjusted so like they didn't make as many as before, but I, I think the demand for Too Faced and the sort of craze over the cuteness of Too Faced has sort of died down, at least a little bit, and I think that that is definitely impacting them, which is why we're seeing 
seeing more of these sort of cutesy limited edition collections showing up there. Stuff that would have been like hanging, popping off in 2016, 2015, you're now going to be seeing more at like the TJ Maxx's in my opinion. I just think that that collection in general didn't hit it out of the park in the way that some of their old stuff used to. Finally, I will say, I saw the Becca Sunset palette, which I believe was one of their sort of last few releases before they announced that they were closing as a brand. And I think that we're going to see a lot of Becca, um, obviously, at TJ Maxx because Becca closed down as a brand. Um, I think that they're probably going to do their sort of blowout sales until they officially close. I believe it was September they said they were going to close. I think that they're going to see, we're going to see a lot of those sort of blowout sales from them trying to get the most, but they're absolutely going to sell to stores like TJ Maxx and Marshall just to try to get some of the money back on any product they have left. And I also think too there's been a few other, Kelly actually has done some really good videos about other brands that maybe aren't as prominent as Becca but other brands that are kind of closing down as a result of COVID and a lot of other things. And I think we're going to start seeing a really huge influx of makeup as these brands start to wind down. We're going to see a huge influx of makeup into stores like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, you know, all of those places. And honestly, I, I think that's good. I think a lot of people sometimes on TJ Maxx makeup. Like, I know influencers will go there and, like, be like, oh, it all sucks or it's all whatever. But honestly, it really just shows to me, like, TJ Maxx just shows makeup being so inexpensive at places like TJ Maxx or whatever. It just shows how overpriced the stuff is to begin with. Because if that's what TJ Maxx can sell it at to still make a profit, because it's still decently expensive, if that's what they can sell it at to make a profit, it just shows me how much the markup is for a lot of this stuff and how ridiculously priced brands make it in the first place. So if you can go and like get some bargains on some lipsticks or some eyeshadows, like check it out, make sure it's good, go do it. Like go get it. <laughs> Go get a Becca highlighter, like pop off. I am the type of person that loves a bargain and loves a deal. I still remember like how excited I would get if I saw like a Too Faced palette or something like that sitting there. So go off, go find the deals and tell me if you guys see any of this stuff there, please tag me because I'm curious to know. And also let me know what you guys think is going to be in TJ Maxx soon. What would you not be surprised by being there? Um, yeah. Thank you so much to Kelly for this video idea. I think it's really fun. And thank you so much to you guys for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below along with my little social justice spotlight and my vlog channel and my podcast channel. Go check those out. And yeah, I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!